Hey there. Thanks for tuning in. You ready for another episode of my Bigfoot sighting? All right then. Let's do this. Seen a bunch of run-down new horse towns where the church is the backbone, loves in the plow. And the five-string melodies grooving. With the farmland rows where the roots run deep. Beyond the noise of the busy streets. Where the songs of the south are soothing. When I hear the front porch picking down home rhythm ringing out. I don't run from banjo music. Yeah. My Bigfoot sightings have all been in western Pennsylvania, mostly in southwestern Pennsylvania. I had four definite encounters with them while either hunting or fishing. And my first encounter was just north of Cumberland, Maryland at two lakes it's still in Pennsylvania. They're called Gordon Lake and Coon Lake. The upper dam dumps into the lower dam, and then uh, that's wh- where Cumberland, Maryland gets their drinking water from. And I've been hunting and fishing there since I was a little kid. And when I started driving, and I started hunting down there around the dam, like up on the mountain there. And it's kind of like a big hollow, like on the edge of the two lakes. And there are several like hollows that go from the main road up into the mountain. And there, it's probably about two miles to the top of that mountain. And my first encounter, it was uh, around... I think it was 2005 because I was working for Mr. Spouting at the time. It's in Fishertown, Bedford County. And I had some vacation to use up. It was the second week of buck. I believe it was uh, maybe a Thursday because the next day I went back to work, I remember. What happened was I went up in before daybreak. I already knew where I was going to sit. I planned on sitting at the edge of like a big ravine. And there, there's like a creek bed that goes down to the lake from the top of the mountain. There's actually a spring that runs underneath a massive rock up there at the top. And then it runs into the ground. And then below that, there is a pond right in the middle of the, the woods right there. And that hill is like a plateau at the top. It's real steep on the edges and it's flat at the top of it. And there's ravines the whole way around that plateau that go up around and up into the steeper part of the mountain. And then the creek bed below that pond and everything, it follows down clean to the lake. So I I was going to sit right at the lower edge like across from where that plateau I was talking about is it's like down towards the lake for probably it's like about three or 400 yards across this ravine that goes around that plateau and it continues around the edge where I was hunting and you could see like probably four or 500 yards so I I thought maybe I could spot a buck right there so I sat there until around 12, 1230, and I didn't see a thing. I didn't see any deer, any squirrel or anything there that morning. So I'm sitting there, and the night before, they had a dusting of snow, and then that day, it got really sunny. It was beautiful. It was like 50-degree weather that next day, and like when the sun came out the leaves were still wet from the dusting of snow melting so it was nice quiet walking so i decided to take a walk since i wasn't seeing anything so i walked straight down through the ravine which is pretty steep 
not as steep where I was sitting, but once you get through the creek bed and then go up to that plateau, it's really steep. And it took me some time to get up to the edge of that plateau. So once I got to the edge of the top of the, where the plateau starts, it's like a big flat and it's brushy up there. There's lots of mountain laurel and those red and green jagger bushes all over the place. And there's trails that go through it, like deer trails, but it's very hard to walk through. But it's a little clearer right at the edge. So when I got to the edge up at the top there, I come across what I at first I thought was a bear because it was black. It was all black and what else is black in our neck of the woods? You know, there's black bears. <laughs> so I assumed it was a black bear at first, but something in my head said that's not I, I knew in the back of my mind it wasn't a bear. It was sitting on its rear end, just like an ape would, like a chimpanzee or a gorilla would. If you look that up, they sit on their rear end and their back is straight up and their arms are out like on a 45 degree angle towards the ground. And its hands was on the ground and its knees were up bent with its feet flat on the ground it was facing away from me and a little bit to my left and it had its back to me when i walked up over that plateau and it was real quiet there so it never even heard me and it was only like 10 yards away from me i walked right up to it and when i seen it it turned its head to its left and looked at me i seen its face and it immediately turned around instantly and started running on all fours, like galloping for about 30 yards or so towards that pond that I was talking about. And it went straight for that pond and it, it went 30 yards and then it got up on its back legs and started running like a person up through the mountain laurel and the jaggers. So I'm thinking, you know what? That wasn't a bear at all. You know, I w still wasn't sure what the heck it was. And so I decided I was going to follow it and see, see if I could see it again. So I actually chased it up through the thick mountain laurel and the jagger bushes and everything. And it went straight up the mountain. And I followed it up through this thicket and it was pretty far it was probably about a quarter mile through there and then once i got up above there back into the little more open woods there's like big oak trees up there and big cherry trees a lot of them are like three foot in diameter they're massive trees and when i got up to the clearing i'm walking up the hill still it was way ahead of me. I seen a couple of glimpses of it. It was running in a, like a zigzag pattern up from me. And it would like, every once in a while, it would stop and let me catch up a little bit to where I could see it. And then it would take off again, the other, like a zigzag pattern. And then I got up into this clearing and there's a big logging road that goes from my left to my right, like straight across the, the mountain and it was flat there and it was a little uphill for me and this is the second one it come from the left of me it come walking on this logging road just like a person would walk and then there there was several large rocks which i didn't realize how big they were until i went there later and i put my I had a 22 Magnum, which is like 43 inches long. And the smallest rock that it stepped on was a foot taller than my rifle. So I'm thinking like 53 inches was the shortest rock. It would go to each rock along that logging road and it would step up on top the 
rock with its right foot, just like it's stepping up on a step. And it easily just pushed itself right up on there and stood up on the rock. And then it would look at me. It, it like turned to look at me and kind of look in the corner of its eyes right directly at me. And it would curl its right side of its lip up like a dog would, like if you ever try to take a dog's bone and it's ground and it's trying to bite you, that's what it did, but it didn't make no sound at all. But it kept doing that. It, it would step up on a rock, then it would curl its lip up at me like that and look at me, and then it would step back off the rock. And then it would go walk over to the next one and do the same thing. There was like four or five rocks well, there was three big rocks that were all bigger than 53 inches. That The other two were up to my chest or to my neck. And it, it stepped up on them with one easy step. Like, it was effortless. And it would look at me. And then there was a couple smaller rocks in between the two last ones, big ones. And... uh it would step on all them little rocks and do the same thing. And I thought, I'm holding my 270 rifle kind of pointed at them, you know. But I wasn't intending to shoot them or nothing. I just wanted to see what it was. Because they were so human-like that I never even thought about shooting it. I could have, but I never even gave that a thought because it was so human-like. And I just was curious to see what it was because i never seen nothing like that. So after it stepped on the second large rock, it stepped back down and I took my rifle and I put it up my sling on my shoulder and I stuck my hands up in the air as if to signal to it. I'm not interested in hurting you or nothing. So that's what I did. And then, it stepped on that last rock, which is, was the biggest one. That was uh, like almost up to my neck. That's how high the ro rock was. And it's triangle shape. It was pointed at the top. And it stepped up on that rock. And it balanced itself. Like it put its arms out. And it's one other foot. It's left foot. Like behind it. And it like balanced for a second. Like it was showing off almost. And then. It stepped back off of that rock and looked at me and it didn't snarl that time. And it turned up and started walking up over the mountain. There was like another deer trail that went straight up the mountain in the direction the other one went. So I let it get it in front of me a little bit. And then I kept following it up the mountain and we got up to where there used to be a tree that overhung a drop off right at the edge of that, the bottom of the mountain laurel. Cause it's at the top of the mountain, it's all real thick mountain laurel straight above there. And right at the bottom edge, there's like a drop off. And there used to be a tree that extended out over the edge of that. And there was a deer trail that went right underneath it. And you could sit in the Y of that tree. And like years before I even seen this thing, I crawled up that tree and I was hunting on it. And the deer would walk right underneath you on their trail. And you could easily just jump on them if you wanted to, you know. And I thought, man, something's using this for an ambush thing to get a deer, you know. I didn't know what it was, though. Because there was like long stringy hair stuck in the bark and the bark was all worn down and the bark was still on there there was like little long stringy hairs stuck in the bark of it and i never thought nothing of it that was before i ever seen anything down there like that and i just figured maybe it was a some kind of animal hunting off of it well the next year a windstorm came and blew that tree down and then in that same area right there the next year, there was a new tree structure, almost like a hunting blind. But what was weird about this hunting blind was 
it was made up of it looked like when it was made it was green trees that were broken and the the bark was still attached to it and they were wrapped around to make like a round blind around the standing trees and i thought how could a person break those trees and wrap it around like that round with the bark still attached to it in one piece you know and they, they were stacked up higher there's like a log against the standing tree inside the blind but it was high and if i stood inside of that i couldn't even see up over it so i don't know if it would have been a hunter's blind i mean you would have to like step out of it to shoot or shoot through the the logs because they were like eight or ten inch logs that was broken like that I don't see how any human could do that. So I'm thinking that was a structure for them to hunt in or something. I wasn't sure, but that's another story. That's I've seen two separate structures up there in that same area. And that one was recently. I actually thought it was all the same one, but I found my old pictures. And here there's there used to be a rounder one. The newer one is more of a triangle, and it's pointed towards a tree break in an X formation. I thought maybe it was some kind of sundial thing or that they use, or but I don't know. I don't know what it is, but uh, I can't explain that. Anyhow, as I was heading up past where that old tree was got blown down, I was following it up through there, and it same thing it was going like in a zigzag pattern and it would let me catch up to it i'd lose sight of it and then i'd come up about a hundred yards and then it'd be like a hundred yards away from me and it would be going the opposite way to, that it was i kept following it up the mountain and i got into that real thick mountain laurel and there's one trail that goes through there it's clay and uh at that time, there was very little leaves on the trail up through there because of the mountain laurel was so thick. So when I got up in there to where I couldn't see like 10 feet in front of me, I heard more than one running up through the on that trail. You could hear their feet slapping on the clay on the ground. And I thought, I better turn around and get out of here. <laughs> I didn't give up, though. I went back down to where that tree fell over and I went out into the open woods to the left and I circled back up to the top and I seen that same one it was uh, walking very fast like a speed walk and it was it looked back at me over its left shoulder and it walked around the yellow gate up at the top and it was it's posted land way at the top Somebody else, I think that uh, some kind of outdoor club owned it or something. I'm not sure. I had a loaded 270 rifle, so I stopped falling it. And I said, I better get out of here. And so that was my first encounter that I had down about probably 10 miles away from Cumberland, Maryland at Gordon and Coon Lakes, right where the the upper dam is that's where i seen it so my second encounter happened in that same general area but it was right where the the upper dam dumps into the lower dam there's a long bridge that goes across the dam the upper dam and the spillway goes right under that bridge and it drops about 100 feet down to the lower dam well, I was on the upper dam side. Well, let me explain how it is there. When you cross that bridge, there's a little path to the left of the bridge and it to the right of the bridge that goes down and you can fish right next to the breast of the dam or the bridge, which is the same thing. If you go up probably... Uh, a hundred yards there's a pull off to the left and there's like a pretty large 
about a 70 feet round parking space where you can park your car in there. And then there's a yellow gate at the bottom. And there's a trail that's like about four or six feet wide that runs across the road from the upper, the opposite side from the lake. It comes down the mountain from very close to where I had my first encounter. It's like the next hollow over from there. So that trail comes down across the road and right before that parking lot that I was talking about. And it goes straight down to the lake. Well, I parked my Nissan Pathfinder right in the middle of that parking lot like a little bit away from that yellow gate. I didn't want to block the gate or nothing. So I had it face down towards the lake. And I went over right next to, like if you go back towards the bridge, I went on the upper dam side of the bridge or the breast. And I was fishing right next to the bridge. And I was catching really nice 12, 13 inch bluegills. And I was catching them left and right there. And I was just throwing them back. I wasn't even keeping them. They were just fun to catch. It was in the evening. It was right before dusk. And I continued to catch fish. And I didn't want to leave. So and it was getting dark. But I didn't care because I was catching fish. So all of a sudden, I heard a one roar like a almost like it sounded a lot like a bear the first roar and i i thought wow i better get pack my stuff and get out of here <laughs> so my plan was to walk back up the path towards the main road right beside the beginning of the bridge and i was going to walk up the road to my car which is only 100 feet up the road and it I could have made it to my car. Well, I got halfway up there to the road and I heard a big roar, which you can look up Sasquatch yells that there's one from Arizona and there's one from Bluefield, West Virginia that sound identical to what I heard. It was it just sounded like a man yelling at the top of his lungs. But it was much deeper and much louder than any person could yell you could actually feel the the vibration in your chest when it yelled that's how loud it was and it was coming from across the road on the top of that little hill before it drops down to the road so by this time it was dark but i could see because there was a, a full moon out that night there was good moonlight and I could see pretty well. So I I was afraid to go clean up to the main road because it was right across the road right there. So I took off straight through that little patch of woods, which I didn't realize how thick it was in there. But I started going into that woods and it was pretty dark in there. There was just a little bit of light in there. And I got to where that six foot wide trail comes down across the road and when i got right before that trail and this thing come walking down i heard it walking crossing the road and then it come down and it got right in front of me when i got to that trail it come walking that down that trail and it like stopped me right before it's not far from my, where my car was parked but it stopped straight in front of me and I had my little tackle box and the fishing rod with me. That's all I had. I had that in my right hand. And it came down and got right in front of me. And kind of like a linebacker would, it crouched down, had its knees bent. And it had its arms out towards me, like right on the outside edge of my shoulders, as if to block me from going left to right. I tried to. I was trying to like walk around it and every time I moved to the right, it would move with me. And every time I moved to the left, it would move that way. And then it started grunting at me. 
like making uh, 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 like grunt sounds. And then it started poking my chest and then it smacked my shoulders. Like it was start trying to intimidate me or scare me or something. And then all of a sudden its eyes lit up red. I freaked out. I, I never seen nothing like that. I never seen eyes like glow, like red beat red. It had big pupils, but its whole eye was glowing red, both eyes. And this thing was so wide. It was like probably twice as wide as me. And when it was crouched down and had its knees bent, I was like eye level with the bottom of its pectoral muscles. I could see its abs and its muscles and everything. And I, I could see long, dark hair all over it. In the moonlight, you could see the top of the, like, real stringy hair on the top of its head. Like, wild hair. And it looked like a, a wild man. And uh, when its eyes lit up, I freaked out. And I, I like, backhanded its left arm with my the back of my left hand. I hit it as hard as I could, and I I ran to towards the right at the same time, hollering. And uh, when I did that, it startled the heck out of it, and it took off down towards the lake. And I ran to my car as fast as I could. I got in that thing, and I was out of there in no time. <laughs> I actually thought I was going to die right there because that, I mean, it it confronted me there, and it, it wasn't going to let me around it, and that. Um, I guess I'm lucky I freaked out on it and I smacked it and it kind of startled it. It seemed like when I touched it, it actually scared it and it ran down towards the lake away from me. But it seems like they're very territorial from what I saw in these, those first two encounters. And that's all that happened on that one. And those were my first two sightings I had. If you'd like to be able to listen to the show without ads and have full access to bonus content, that's an option. To find out how, please go to mybigfootsighting.com. My Bigfoot sighting happened in Birmingham County, Ohio. In 2008, September, me and my ex-father-in-law, we were hunting in Birmingham, Ohio County. We were there all day from 6.30 in the morning till 5.30. And when we was about ready to leave, a big old deer come through. So we started, you know, walking toward it. And he was supposed to went down one tractor path. And I was supposed to walk down another tractor path. And I walked through this little, probably five feet of tree line, and I jumped into the lime bee field, and my big deer was over at the end of it. So I'm sitting there waiting for my ex-father-in-law to come through the other path, and he never showed up. So I started walking toward the deer, and something caught the corner of my eye. So I looked, and I'm screaming, and I thought it was my father-in-law. Then I looked at the deer. The deer looked up and seen it, and I looked at the deer again, and it took off. So I hurried up and ran back through the little five feet of wood area, line, tree line, and it was probably like maybe 10 feet from me, and I'm yelling at this thing, and it would not turn around at all. It looked like a big old orangutan on two legs. So I figured it was probably about 16 years old. So I drew my crossbow up and put the sight right on his head. And I was going to fire, but something told me not to. Because it was like saying, don't shoot, don't shoot. Because the arrow might not do nothing to him. And he might come and get you. And so I just 
stood there and watched him walk into the woods and where me and my ex-father-in-law were sitting at in the tree stand, he could have reached up and grabbed us. He walked right under it and took a left and just like kind of vanished. So then the fog kind of like disappeared too. And I turned around, my ex-father-in-law was in the truck flashing his lights, trying to get my attention. So when I backed up, I had a feeling that there was a no one or something watching me, but it was him. He just kept walking and just like turned his head a little bit, but I couldn't see his face because he was too far into the woods at the time. But I say he was about at least seven foot and about 350 pounds. He was in between a LeBron James and a Shaquille O'Neal body type. His arms went a little past his knees. Um, he was kind of muscular. I wish he would have turned around where I could see his face or her face. Because to me, it sounded like it was deaf. Because I did the hooting and hollering and everything at this thing. And he would not turn around. He just wanted to keep walking like he was on a mission. In the land, there's no hills. It's just farmland. And where I'm at up here in Ohio, we don't have no bears. We don't have no lions. We don't have no elephants. We don't have no tigers. The only thing we got here is coyotes, rabbits, and deers, squirrels. We don't have no dangerous animals here. So to me, I was like, that's a Sasquatch. I finally got to see one after not believing everybody saying these things exist. Well, I didn't believe it at first until I finally got my sighting. And to me, I think I was the chosen one, just like the rest of the people that seen them. They were the chosen ones. And... The second time I thought I heard one was when I was in Coshocton and I was coming down the mountain and it was like six o'clock and it was getting dark. And the only thing I had was the moonlight coming through the valley. I heard two ruckus, one on the side of my left and one on the side of my right. So I started walking back, backwards. And I had my muzzleloader at the time. Well, it kept walking. Both of them kept walking. And when I said, I have a gun, they stopped. But once I started backing up again, they started moving. So when I got to this one path, I, it just kind of scared me. So I shot. And everything went silent. And then I started running, and then I heard the one on top of the hill. It was getting it. It was like it, they was trying to surround me or something. But then my two partners that were out there, they came, and they were like, boy, you look like a ghost. You're white as heck. I'm like, yeah, well, if you heard what I heard, you'd be the same way. And then we left, and we came back to up here near Lorraine, Ohio, and when we decided to hunt the following day where we've seen the Bigfoot, went on the other side of the old man's property, his kids, and we were hunting over there, and then I, start, I walked my own way, and I was going down this creek area, the game wardens and them guys was driving up. So I unloaded my gun and I heard this big old ruckus coming through this creek. And it stopped right when the game wardens pulled up on me. And I asked them, I said, did you see the deer go through there? They were like, no. Oh. To me, that wasn't no deer sound that was going through there because it was too heavy and it was too splashy. And when the game warden checked me, I checked, you know, the area that it came from. 
and it looked like it went underneath the street with the big old pipes for the water and everything. So I looked down it and I didn't see nothing, just a big old empty spot. So then the next day, we went back and I got into the tree stand. Well, he didn't come with me this time. I got about like 12 feet up in the air and I started recognizing this big old shadow about football field along, you know, that he was far away. So I picked up my binoculars and there's this big old shadow. It took, man, it was like a big old hole in the woods. And then it started doing this oh at me. So I mocked him again. I mocked him. And then he did it again. So I mocked him again. And then the third time he did it, my bottom of my tree stand fell <laughs> all the way to the ground. I'm sitting there hanging. So I chimmied up the tree a little bit, unstrapped my strap, and chimmied down, grabbed the bottom of my tree stand, my crossbow, and I headed out. And I come back the next day, and me and my father-in-law, ex-father-in-law, we I climbed up the tree, chimneyed up it, and grabbed the rest of my tree stand and got down. And we went into this one area, and we chased this buck. He shot this buck, and it had a big old gash down the belly. There's no fence. There's no uh, wire fence or any of that that was around. And this was freshly gashed. So we were like, well, we're leaving this deer here. We're not, you know, trusting it or anything. And then the following week, that's when we've seen the Sasquatch, Mr. Bigfoot. And like I said, he was, looks like a orange orangutan, about seven foot tall, about 350 pounds. And when... We left, we told my ex-mother-in-law, my ex-wife, and her siblings, and they just looked at us like we were crazy. And I told them, I said, you guys can look at us like we're crazy if you want, but it's the truth. If I wouldn't have had a flip phone that day and it wasn't in the truck, you would have had some pictures. And their father, God rest his soul, he ain't never cussed in his life. He was a good Christian guy, you know, go to church. He did his, you know, manly thing, hunt, whatever. Cause he was raised in West Virginia, well, Pennsylvania. And I never heard him cuss, and he told them, yeah, and I told Mark to get that blank out of the woods before dark. And I looked at him and I said, well, you was there with me and it was only 5.30. So my feelings on all that, I do believe I, I put the word out there. The only way that these people would actually believe you is if they had the experience that I had. And I can tell the same story day after day. Because that's what happened. And then about three years later, four years later, my hunting partner passed away. And I've never been in the woods since. Then I went back two years ago and put some apples on the tree. Well, I went back and they were gone. Cause I nailed them to the tree stand and they were gone. They were grabbed up and disappeared. So I know he's still hanging out there. It's on a farmland. The woods is not probably about 80 yards as a football field. 
and that's all it was. And there's a bunch of farmhouses all over. When he made that sound, I thought it was a cow at first. And I'm thinking, well, there's no cows here. But I got that noise, his call in my head, and I can do it excellent, just like him, because I mocked him. And every time I talk about him, I get the chills. I tell my friends, I tell my nephews, I tell everybody, even at work. And I keep telling them, go to the woods. Go here, go to Coshocton, go to Salt Fork, and you will see and you will believe. Now, there's two things that I do want to see. I want to see an alien, and I want to see the man upstairs. And that's the only way that we can all believe. Whew. Oh, my. <laughs> Got me going. But, yeah, my experience was real, and I would love to see him again, but not that close. That 10 feet, that seemed like to him, it would have been only took him two steps, and he would have been on me. And he would have probably, or her, would have probably wrung my neck. Ooh, and I would love to see him again. And this time I would bring my phone that has the camera on it. I've been trying to get a hold of James Fry, Bobo, Todd Stanley, and nobody wants to get a hold of me, but I am grateful that Vic got a hold of me where I could put my story out there and my beliefs, and I appreciate you for doing this for me a lot. Thank you, Vic. Well, that's it for tonight's show. If you've had a Bigfoot sighting and would like to be a guest, please go to mybigfootsighting.com and let us know. Thanks for listening. Have a great night. Seen a bunch of run down new horse towns where the church is the backbone loves in the bow. And the five string melodies groove in But the farmland rose where the roots run deep Beyond the noise of the busy streets Where the songs of the south are soothing When I hear the front porch picking down home rhythm ringing out I don't run from banjo music Yeah
swing, mama's best sweet tea. Come and stand. 